Hello YouTube. Today's project is to go get my S14 from a fabricator. I dropped it off at to repair the front end, get frame damage pulled out, build a tube front, uh, make all the lights, the bumpers, the hood, everything lined back up so it fits. The car's seen a lot of abuse in the last, I don't know, year or two since I've gotten it, and it has been a fantastic car, I love it. And why we're getting that is because August 22nd and August 23rd is round three of Lone Star Drift, both Pro-Am and Texas Street Legal, at MSR Houston, which is a really cool road course down in Houston, Texas, but a beautiful track. It's gonna be great for advanced drivers, it's gonna be great for noobs, two track layouts, so it's a big road course that has multiple sections so that we can run them concurrently at the same time. If you're gonna come drive with us, look up Lone Star Drift Round One Explainer on YouTube to see the layout and to see how everything travels and the driver's meeting is in there because of COVID stuff. And spectators are welcome. Uh, the place is massive, so there's not a problem fitting people in there. Has great areas to watch from. They're elevated above the track. Sit next to a lake over by the track. It's a lot of fun. Boop. My apartment complex door. Clunk. All right, so I'll see you there if you come. Otherwise, there'll be content sometime on YouTube at some point in the future. We are here. Oh, cool. What is this? It is a... Samurai, but what's going on here? Oh, it's a side by side with the samurai body put on it. That is weird. One second, let's see this better. Boop, wide frame mode, metal side steps. So it's a side by side tub, side by side dash, and everything. Side by side, looks like an aftermarket cage top tossed on top. Side by side seats, not all the way bolted down. It's hard to see, but the engine is back there. Oh, easier to see it here. So it's basically a complete side by side suspension and everything with just the body dropped on. That is hilarious. This thing must be so expensive then. Unless it's like a totaled out side by side and they're just trying to repair it. If this is just a project someone did, Maybe it's so someone could have a street legal side by side, but man, this would be expensive and it's a Polaris. I wonder if they would let it be street legal. All right, so turn five is owned by Kevin Susi. He does fabrication stuff. He has lots of cars out here that are beat up. It looks like this thing needs some type of tube frame front end, which is basically what mine was. Mine came in with not nearly as bad of a wreck as that, but had a like, broken up bash bar and broken frame rail and all that got fixed. Woo, this is a very serious drift machine. Very professional. Has a window nut for safety. Very safe car. Oh, it's still automatic. You can see it has a uh, working hood thing. These are awesome windshield wipers. This is quite the car. I don't understand what this was doing. Sorry, I'm enthralled by this car. Let's look at what's going on here. So I assume what he does mostly is make cages because he's a fabricator. Let's look at this cage. Oh, that's actually tucked up super nice. So this is one of the first things people do wrong in any type of cage is they put the bars down here where someone can hit their head really badly. This is tucked up completely up there. You can see that one much more clearly and it's super out of the way so that the driver doesn't hit his head on it. That's, that's very, very nice. Uh, you people judge as welds. I am not a professional welder. Are those acceptable? Although I do tech cars constantly. See if it's welded up top. It is welded on top. Cool. Anyways, just a little note for all you guys that are getting a cage built, make sure that top bar up there next to your head is as tucked up as humanly possible. So my S14 has seen better days. I haven't cleaned up the rear end yet. It's still, I don't know what to call it, borked. Uh, 
These are from drift accidents. So both sides have been tapped a bit on the back here. It's hilarious how both sides kind of match. I've been hit right there by another car. Could have been me drifting into someone. I think one of these sides is Brad Burnett because there's a bash bar hole from where he hit me and then flew off track. I'd have to find it. Um, I got hit there, got hit in the door. Is this the one that has a hole? Yeah, look at that. A bash bar hole right there from where the tube got me. Thanks, Brad. I'm sure I've hit him too, though. This is my race car. Kevin didn't touch any of this so far. He just did the front. This is very important to seal the back up as much as possible so you don't get a ton of smoke in there. I'm not sure how well sealed it is. I haven't thought, oh, hello, pup. Hello, pup. He was just cutting my front fenders. So I got, it's easier to show over here. This is my front fender. A normal front fender continues right here and comes down like that. And I've cut about two inches out of it all the way around on the last fender to fit 265s. And we had to trim this up as well to do that. So this piece went right there. And that's how I fit 265s. People ask me that all the time. And then this is the vent. Whoop, come here, vent. Tink. Just like that. Kind of kind of like that. Some somewhere like that. Boop. We've also clearanced up here slightly. Fenders, when they come to you, they have a lip on them. The rears are always especially bad. So this probably goes like that somewhat. And as your tire cycles up, it catches that. And in the back, it's really bad most of the time. I saw a fender around here the other day. Boop, throw my trash on the ground. So when you get a normal fender like this, this is a wheel well. And if you put this on your car like this, you're immediately going to have the tire crash into this surface. So I cut that off. Pretty much all drifters cut that off. Yep. So you just cut it through there and then you make it like a two dimensional fender, which is what we've done back here, which is the same thing. This is just a two dimensional fen fender. And because if that went across there, there's no way you could have wheel fitment like that. Doo, 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 doo. And what he's done so far is I had a couple of really bad impacts in the front, which bent this frame rail completely and destroyed it. So he had to cut it out and fix it. He also had to rebuild me a bash bar. And then this was just the original core support structure. And all this was cut out before. And this came over. And then the stock core support was super flimsy. So they pulled this frame rail out. They then cut the frame rail off, built a new tube structure forward on both sides. Same with right there. And then connected it round like that. Oh, and they, they made a cool file and cut it out on their CNC table over there. You can see how all that looks. Put that on there. The tension rods now bolt right here and have this. So the stock S13 and 14s are like a wicker basket up here up front. This is now built like a tank. And then you normally get like a Nismo power brace or whatever to brace this. Now it's just a tank. In a bad collision, I might just completely collapse the frame rails or mess them up, but you're not worried about that. You just go for just like ultimate strength now, especially because this thing is basically a dune buggy up front and has been through so much abuse. I just want it as strong as possible. I have broken headlights, so I just ordered new eBay headlights or Amazon headlights. I wish I could afford fancy ones, but S14 headlights are crazy expensive now. So I got those like $194 ones. Need to mount those up because this is how my car always rolls and it's not ideal. Same with like my wiring has been a mess for a while. I need to fix that. He built me new mounts for the hood pins, new structure there. This little guy is built pretty weak so that it can bend and move if it had to, if I get in an accident. So if I get in a small accident in the corner, it doesn't take everything out, but I still want things pretty strong. So it's probably gonna hit the bash bar here, take the impact on this bar down to the frame rail area. And then if it's bad, this is gonna bend in and that little tiny bar, cause it's not very big, 
will bend and move out of the way. But I don't ever hit anything, so I don't have to worry about that. I am very delicate with cars. And then 265s on the front. I love the way that feels. It's, if you wanna do like backwards entries and stuff, it's a bit too much grip for stuff like that, but I camera car a lot with my cars, which means drive straight behind people. And if they screw up, I need to have a lot of front grip so that I can do evasive maneuvers and braking and everything. Um, if you have 225s on the front of your car and you're driving straight and somebody does something while you're camera carring, because I need to be hopefully within a foot of them most of the time doing camera car stuff, I don't want to lock up the front brakes and hit them, which I've almost done a bunch, especially in the 370Z when I was driving it originally. To fit the Wise Fab and stuff, just to make it super simple, we put 225s on the front and it had no front grip when trying to grip drive. 265s in the back, 225s up front, or maybe even 215s, and it would just like plow. So it was really dangerous. And this camera car is way better. Also, it has like 500 horsepower at the wheels almost, so it's way easier to camera car. Um, he built me some nice brackets to mount everything, little brackets. Now my radiator is nice and secure. I do still have to replace the fan. I run a Taurus fan. I can show you that in a minute, but pretty simple. I mean, pretty simple because I didn't have to build it. Uh, here's Kevin. Kevin, do you want to talk about this thing? Yeah. Tell me about it. What'd you do? Well, we cut off the flimsy front end that was on there and went ahead and built kind of, it's kind of a standard cookie cutter front end. It, they all vary in their own way. So uh -huh. it's the same same front end that I run on my car personally, mm -hmm. um, except we went ahead and cut the, the frame rail off there because it was all spaghetti. Uh -huh. And uh, went ahead and built the lower portion, did the cool cutout, added some uh, factory tie down locations um, mm -hmm. so you could run the different straps, uh, built a bash bar for it, um, mounted all the headlights, the hood pins, and uh, fix some other things that were messed up. One of the reasons I brought it over here, it made it really simple for me because you have a frame machine buddy across the street mm -hmm. and my car just came over here, you drug it over there for me and took care of all that stuff. So it went on a frame machine, right? Yeah, and they, they pulled out what they could and then I built off of there. Yeah, what do you mean what they could? You said it was perfect. Well, you're never <laughs> gonna get them perfect. So this strut tower was the one that was moved back. Do you know how much it was moved back? Uh, probably about three or four inches Ooh. and now it's within about a half inch of where it's supposed to be I don't worry about that too much for the perfect location of this because All the suspension stuff mounts down to the subframe as long as most of that stuff is pretty well sorted This is just gonna mess up caster which is gonna make the car transition a little bit different left to right But it's not so bad that I really have to worry about it driving. It yeah. was bad and I was still driving on it And uh, you have all adjustable arms to make up the difference and find a happy medium with it. Yeah, the only problem with chasing everything around too much with arms is then to get the correct alignment, stuff isn't symmetrical in your arm layout. You know what I mean? So like it kind of right. starts to become you're chasing a mess and you don't want to do that too much. I'm not really great at crazy alignments or anything, but I love this car and my friend Mark has been trying to get me to throw this chassis away and do another one. And he's probably right, except it is so much work to change a chassis. We'd have to build a new cage. We'd have to like redo the body work and everything. We would need to, the big thing for me is cage. You'd have to go through and strip everything, bang out the firewall, and then move the entire drivetrain over, realign it, you know, go repaint it, which this thing does need a paint job. But it's just so much work. And one of the things I hate about this right now is with an S14 like this, same thing with S13s now, it's getting kind of impossible to find doors. like. I'm looking around his shop right now, seeing if there's some doors that I can find and get him to sell me, but they're I starting have, to- I have doors, but they're mine. Yeah, exactly. And I have like a one set of doors left, I think from, you know, a few years ago. And I remember at one point I had like eight doors and I had a full set of JZX doors. You know, like we were all storing doors and then slowly you started using them up because they were 20 bucks at the time. Mm -hmm. And now how much do you think a door is worth? Uh, they're about a hundred a piece. Oh, that's it? For S14. I'll give you a hundred bucks for a door. Shit. <laughs> See, it's not worth that because you won't take it. Yeah, because I'll have to go find another one. Right, I would definitely give you a hundred bucks for a door right now. So what are the thought processes with doing all this stuff? Because I want it built like a tank. I don't want to have to mess with it. But as a fabricator, he wants to be able to cut off pieces and replace them easily. I sometimes think like if I'm going to take a mild impact, I want all that impact to go in the other guy's car, if you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so I've had some impacts with this S14 specifically that were pretty rowdy, 
and most of the impact went to the other person's car. And then to fix the car, we set it on a trailer and we used the street faction bash bar we had before and we just strapped it down with normal uh, tie down straps, the big ones. I don't see any here. But you guys know what I mean. The big ones that we tie our cars down with in the trailer, the ratchet straps. We just tied it down to the trailer in multiple spots and then strapped it down as tight as we could, got it as good as we could, and then we attached a truck to it and just started yanking. You know, so we used the trailer itself, a flatbed or like um, an open trailer to strap it down and just started yanking on it as hard as possible. Uh, so I was gonna say like I ghetto do stuff. I think my, most of my theory on this is put the damage into the other guy's car and the soft spots of his car or just don't get in wrecks. I mean, that's the best thing. I drive a lot, a lot, a lot. And I typically don't really wreck that much. I get like little teeny tiny dents, but it's no big deal. I've only had frame pull wrecks maybe four or five times out of 17 years of drifting. So maybe every two to three years, I have a wreck that's bad enough to do a frame pull. And that's driving 45 days per year, maybe on track. Bad year for track driving though this year. Mm. Oh yeah. No pup. Okay, do you have anything else to talk about? Um, no, I guess one thing, don't overbuild the front end and make it super like a tank like Aaron <laughs> wants because then it just takes all that motion and puts it in the rest of the chassis. Yeah. So then the strut towers, they'll get moved and eventually it gets the firewall moved and all that. But a frame shop can still always pull it out most of the time. Yeah, it just gets costly. But put all that damage in the other guy's car. In Japan, by the way, they don't even run their impact beams. They just run an intercooler in front. Like I've been doing that for six years in my JZX and you just drive with sheer terror of not messing it up and you destroy the back of the car. But because your day is over, you know, the next four or five days is over. If you wreck that front end, you just don't typically do it. Where this gives me like a false sense of confidence. I'm like, sorry, Patrick, your door's, your door's mine. Cool. This motor has been so reliable, by the way. I have not been running an AccuSump, a bunch of the V8 guys, because I was one of the original proponents of AccuSumps. I ran one in my LS240 from 2007 until 2012 or 13, whenever I pulled it out. And this one I've been running for, it is a built motor. Uh, I've been running it for probably two years now, beating the snot out of it. And we haven't had any problems with it. Knock on cheap S14 wood. Wow, is this dash uncracked? Yeah, somebody mentioned that. They're like, oh, they're but it's a green dash. It's out of a Zinke. Yeah. So it's a Zinke dash. So it's even older. That's hilarious. I didn't even realize that an uncracked dash. My right hand drive car, my S13 that I just gave to Mark had a completely uncracked dash, like in perfect shape. But we drilled three holes in it for uh, gauges, which was funny. All right. Anything funny to show about this car? You can see how beat it is. I think I saw. Oh, there's the fan. Can you move the fan for a second? You can see how just hammered the back of the car is. It's torn right there. The chassis is actually torn in places and ripping. Don't tell my tech guy. The glue is ripping out in a bunch of spots, but the big problem is that. But I mean, most guys just cut the, you know, the floor out anyways in these things. It's not a big deal. That's torn pretty bad. All right, you can put that back. People can laugh at my chassis. The whole chassis is kind of like that but it is a fantastic car. It drives with the fastest cars in Texas. All right, thanks for watching. I'm excited to have my S14 back. This video is about nothing more than getting my S14 back, unless you have something else like, oh, this is cool, what is this?